Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're gonna be doing another update on the bull market support band. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember, we also have the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, third week in a row, we have held the bull market support band as support. This is the first one, this is the second one, and then this is the third one. The reason we say this is three is because we had a wick into the bull market support band the week of September 6th. We wicked into it the week of September 13th. We've, we had a long wick even below it the week of September 20th. But remember, we don't care about wicks in terms of holding it, right? In terms of holding it. We just want to make sure that ultimately we are closing above the bull market support band. Now remember, the most bullish scenario for Bitcoin um, that was realistic always is to, was to go up and then come back down and hold it as support. We've held it as support for three weeks. Is that enough? It could be, right? It could be. We would also like to continue seeing it hold as support for the next several weeks. And if we start to move higher, and take out this prior local top, then we can probably say it's sufficient, right? We can probably say it was sufficient. With that said, I mean, if we go back to say September of 2020, you can see that we in fact held it as support for more or less six weeks or so where we were somewhat around it. I mean, not all of these had wicks down into it, but we were, we were fairly close to it for about six weeks or so. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we're off to the races. So, you know, ideally speaking, we'll, we'll continue to see it stay above it. Remember, a week's a long time, so we'll have a long way to go before we get our, our potential fourth week. But remember, right now, we've had three weeks in a row, and now, I mean, at least for the fourth week, we're at least off to a good start. We're already up about 1.73% on the week. Bitcoin is, is nearing a very modest $44,000. Now, one thing we should say, and I mentioned this earlier, is that we were unable to stay above the eight week. Okay, and, and this isn't necessarily that big of a deal. Um, we saw a similar thing happen over here where we were above the eight week and the bull market support band and we came down below and we were below the eight week but above the 20 week for, for a number of weeks. We're sort of in a similar area right now. So, so far, so good. You know, if we had gone above the eight week and we had, had launched into a new mania phase immediately, then it might've called into question how long it could be sustained. It is my understanding that the longer we hang out at the bull market support band, assuming we hold it as support, then ultimately the higher we should fly. Okay, now it's easy for me to make statements like that because it's not like we can go and verify them later. Um, but I, I do want to, you know, to note that the eight week moving average might be something of interest to watch because once we get above it in the future, assuming the bull market support band is ultimately held, that could be where the rally starts. Okay, because that was, that was ultimately where it started over here. At first, we were unable to hold it, okay? So here, at first, we were unable to hold it. And then when we got above it later, the rally, the rally took place. And, and from that point, the rally lasted a long time. I mean, uh, quite a long time, in fact. If we were to take a bar pattern from, say, the break to then the, the local high, okay, so let's, let's overlay that. And I don't know when we're going to break it, but let's... You know, let's say it's going to take a, a, a few weeks, right? Let's say it's going to take a few weeks to break it. And, and we're, we're dubiously speculating that we hold it, which we still don't know if we're going to yet. Um, but if we do hold it and we, and we ultimately break above it in a few weeks or something, then maybe it'll look something like that. Although I would contend that a, a, a theoretical second leg is not going to go, uh, not going to put in the same returns that this one did. Okay, I mean, if it did, it would imply going to $260,000. Is it possible? You know, anything's possible. Is it likely? Probably not. We're probably going to have some form of, of diminishing returns and whatnot. But as measured from the market cycle bottom, as long as we're below 300K, then technically it is diminishing returns. And as measured from the halving, I believe, as long as we're below 250K or something, then, then technically it's, it's diminishing returns. But anyways, I mean, if, if we were to follow something like this that happened last year and we, and we started taking off in, in say, mid-October or something, then you could see the rally extend out into Q1 or Q2 
of, of 2022. But for now, for now, we need to take one week at a time. We have not definitively held it yet until we are able to push higher and put in a new local high. I'm not saying we have to put it in a market, a, a new, a new all-time high. I'm not saying we have to go to 64K before we we're, before we can definitively claim we've held it as support. The problem is if we say we held it as support so far and assume that we have to go higher from here, you know, then what happens if next week we, we actually fall below? So what do we know so far? We've held it for three weeks. We would like a few more weeks of holding it. And I would say the longer we hold it, the more, the more bullish it looks, right? I mean, you know, if you go back to say 2019, or let's even just go back here in May. I mean, here we just, we came down to it and we immediately dropped below. There was like, there wasn't even a fight at all. You go back to 2019, look at this drop here. There wasn't even a fight, right? The battle was very short lived. Again, over here, the battle was relatively short lived. The first, the first week we had a wick into it, the next week we dropped below it. So you can see that in these other circumstances, one, two, and three, there was not really a battle. Here's another good, good example. We had one wick, two wicks, third one below. So, so far we are at least holding it, right? I mean, now we did close below the 21 week EMA. So we should say that we did close below the 21 week EMA, um, but we are in fact still above the 20 week SMA. If you're curious, the 20 week SMA is now coming in at a very modest 40.6K or so, it depends on the exchange you use. The 21 week EMA is now at 43.5K. But again, these will somewhat shift depending on the exchange that you use. So the general range that we're looking to, to be above would it be 40.6 or 40.7K at the lowest. And then on the higher end, as long as we're above say 43.5K, that's even more bullish because then we're not only above the 20 week, but we're also above the 21 week EMA. Okay, so three weeks down. I mean, if we can get another three weeks, I feel like that looks relatively good. Um, but so far, so far we've had one, two, three, and we're currently in our fourth. So, I mean, even if we push up from here, this will be a fourth week because we've at least started the week off in the bull market support band. So this at the very least will be a wick. We'll continue to follow this. We'll continue to see how long it takes us to get above the eight week moving average. Again, it's much higher, closer to, you know, to 47K or so. Let's keep an eye on things. Let's see if we can continue holding the bull market support band as support. And if we can, then we should have clear skies ahead. If we don't, then, you know, I, I would speculate we're going to have another lull in the market, somewhat similar to this one, and then we'll come out the other side and hold it as support. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com if you want to know how I'm navigating these markets. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.